guys, our tag team champions are in the ring now. And they are set to take on, look at that odd duo over there, the Midnight Special and Adam Asher. I don't get that one at all, do you, Bob? You know, there's a lot that I don't get about this Midnight Special. Uh, strange dude, he's come out here and running his mouth over the last several weeks and had to pay for it each and every time, but now, He's teamed up with APOC, the Apocalypse, Adam Asher. Who is as solid as they come. I know, and uh, I don't understand that pairing at all. And, and Asher sends him out to wait this one out. Probably not a bad idea. If those two walk out of here, the tag team champions tonight, that would be an upset if I've ever seen one. It certainly would be, it certainly would be. This OMG, uh, two great looking athletes and work terrific as a team. They came from a training camp and in six months, they were world champions. Not long into their tenure in SWE Fury, they became those tag team champions. They beat uh, the guy who was just down here with us a little while ago, uh, Bam Bam Malone and his partner, Jaden, the Golden Heartthrobs to win those belts. And uh, they hold those tag team titles now, which had been uh, retired for quite some time and brought back here in SWE Fury. The OMG's there. Mike Anthony in the ring now. John Omari awaits his turn. Good block by Archer. Good move. Adam Asher scoops him up. Anthony goes behind. Asher comes around. Big hip toss there. Arm drag takedown. Asher with one of his own. Some great wrestling right here early in in the match. Always the case when Adam Asher is in the ring. A guy who's been up and down the road, wrestled all over the South, was in the great Texas production PCW back in his early days. Powers whip now reversed. Mike Anthony off the rope. No, he holds on. Tagging in John Omari here who comes in. He got his, got his go juice on his backpack there. Yeah, and there's a funny story about that. I just found out about it. When he was a kid, he used to get bullied, and somehow, when he got knocked down one day, his juice box opened up and took a sip and fought back for the first time. Well, wait a minute. Midnight Special just tagged himself in. Asher was doing just fine. Hit that apocalypse now on John Omari. And now here's Midnight Special in with the pin, which barely gets one. Uh, did someone just leave a contract laying around and Midnight Special came along and signed it? And Because I can't imagine him being recruited. I can't either. He needs to tag and get out of there. That would be the wise thing to do. But we're talking about Midnight Special and Wise and, and Midnight Special just don't go along together too well. Anthony with the pin. That's a count of two. Midnight Special kicking out there right at the last moment. As the OMGs work to cut that ring off there and keep Midnight Special isolated in that corner. Oh, he holds onto the rope. That was a smart move there. Midnight Special, is it a choke there? I can't tell from this angle, but referee Yali Sapphire telling him to break the hold. Uh, Punch there, blatant punch. Referee Yali Sapphire didn't see it. She was busy trying to keep Mike Anthony out of the ring. Yeah, and I could give the referee the benefit there. When well, your back turned, your back is turned. That's right, and there he goes, using his boot to smash John Omari into those corner turnbuckle pads. Why don't you tag? He, Asher's trying to get him to tag. He says no, refuses, and comes over and Puts his forearm into Mike Anthony's face there. Asher's asking to tag. Wait a minute, Omari's getting a sip of that juice. Oh, he, you know what happens he there, is. don't you? Yeah. Oh, there we go. <laughs> How about he goes and tags now? That would be the time to do it. Irish Whip now reverses it. Big back body drop. 
tag your partner in. Nope, he's refusing uh, yet again. This midnight special here, a piece of work. Whoa, oh. Looked like he was gonna die with his knee there and try to catch John Omari with a knee and, and Omari moved. And now, and now he goes to try to tag Adam Asher and he says, no, you didn't want me before. Maybe you might as well just handle this one yourself. Close line. And another one. Midnight special down twice now. As we see the OMGs do what they do best, work together. Oh, no. Beautiful move. Beautiful move. Teamwork makes the dream work, right, Kevin Sullivan? Right, exactly. These kids oh. are terrific. Good grief. Omari up off the top rope. Wow. Anthony with the pin. Two and three. I'm not going to say that was a great solid move. But they held their own with Archer, which shows the something. John Omari, Mike Anthony, the OMG. I have a feeling that was the first and last time we'll see the tag team of Adam Asher and Midnight Special. Asher is a terrific, terrific performer, strong, great conditioning, and knows all the wrestling moves. to you about a particular set of championship belts you went for. We'll discuss that in just a moment right after his opponent gets out here, Mr. Frank Stone. Now, Bob, I've got to say, Frank is on the come up. Frank is looking leaner. He's looking meaner than he ever has before. You see, we've trained together before in and outside of the ring, and it, it's great for him to see, given this opportunity against Niles with being such a former TV champion. I'm really looking forward to this. New York, this is Frank Stone! And as you know, just a few weeks ago, Frank Stone in a very tough match against Charlie Haas. He was going after that heavyweight title and uh, had a very good fighting chance at it, but after being draped over the, the top rope, he, uh, he got the pin, one, two, three, Charlie Haas did, and. Frank Zone moves on to the next guy who just happens to be our former TV champion, Niles Flanquet. Charlie's rough, you know, Bob. The reason I'm not wrestling tonight is I have a, my knee injury flared up, and um, I 100%, you know, I credit that to Charlie Haas when, when we did wrestle. So, um, you know, it's, that's why graciously you, you invited me up here on commentary with you, so I want to thank you for that. But I do wish I was out there, but, hey, there's, there's always next time. But uh, at least I get to come check out the action, and I get a front row seat this time. You know, Bob, usually I don't yeah. get this. It's, uh, it's best to let that, let that knee heal up because you got a lot to do. In fact, I want to talk to you a little bit about the uh, tag team picture in SWE Fury. It, it wasn't that long ago that you were in that tournament, uh, which, of course, was uh, in honor of Road Warrior Animal, who was a big part of our company for a while before his untimely passing but uh you know you you were in the hunt for those tag team belts and you were one win away from actually becoming tag team champions along with Jaden we as were. Uh, part of the golden heart thrust talk about that we were you know we, we were one win away like you said a, a split second we uh you know you can't take anything away from the omgs those guys are great uh they were just a little bit better than us that night but you know i, I definitely think Jaden and i are we're going to be coming back hungrier than ever as soon as I healed up, then, you know, hey, everybody out there, good guy, bad guy, it doesn't matter if you're in the tag team division, what title you hold, I'm coming for you. Let's talk a little bit about uh, you teaming up with Jaden, how you guys uh, came together, because uh, you guys have sort of a similar look, sort of a similar attitude uh, when you come to the ring. How did the Golden Heart Throbs come to be? 
I, I think we, we have the same goal in mind, and that's that's gold around our waist. And, you know, it, it's on our name, Golden Heartthrobs. And I'm all about the gold girls and glory, Bob. And uh, <laughs> Jaden's Jay, a heartthrob in himself. We're both good-looking guys, so we came up with the name Golden Heartthrobs. And we're, we're just looking to, to make our place here in SWE. Well, certainly a uh, favorite here in SWE Fury. As we watch in the ring right now, Niles Plunkett and Frank Stone now going at it. Great front row seat here you have with our ringside camera on SWE Fury. Frank's really working that hammer lock, and Frank's a tough dude. He's a strong dude, too, so you definitely don't want to let him get your shoulder in that position. Not to take anything away from Niles Planquet, and while uh, as a connoisseur and a maker of fine wine and then uh, a, a person who enjoys fine wine, you might you might be caught a little off guard if you weren't paying attention because Nigel Re or Niles Planquet is actually a uh, KG veteran in the ring. He is, and he's nobody to take lightly. I've stepped in the ring with Niles before, and he punched me right in the mouth. That's so. right. Just because he's classy, just because he's about his wine, hey, he'll, he'll punch you just like the biggest whiskey drinkers you know. That's right. And here he is working right now with the, uh, the head of Frank Stone, clenching those leg scissors there. Frank's got to start moving here. He cannot just sit here and let Niles. There he goes. There he goes. Kicks out of that, takes him over into a... Nice headlock takeover yep. there, good. Frank Stone. Been seeing a lot of him here lately in SWE Fury. Saw uh, Niles Plunkett in tag team action not too long ago with Jeremy Wyatt. Out here in singles action tonight. Great crowd on hand in Irving, Texas as Frank Stone sort of gingerly tossed out of the ring there by Plunkett. Hey, Forearm. Good, good by Frank. Frank's got to stay right on top of him. He got thrown out of the ring. What did he do? Stepped right back in. Signaling for something here, Plunkett, oh, though. You cannot do that. You cannot take your eyes off of Niles. Like Niles you said, Plunkett, surprise you. Like you said, he is a veteran. He's been doing this, I think, about 18 years. Geez, right into the steel steps. Those steel steps are taking a beating. Yeah, they're taking a beating, but they will, they will beat up your body, too, especially when you go flying into them like that. And there goes Stone. Being thrown back into the ring. It got pinned there. Niles knows he can't win the match on the outside, so he does throw him back in, but he's right back on top of him. Only a count of two. What a great crowd on hand, and it's so good to see crowds getting out and enjoying professional wrestling again. Isn't that right? Oh, absolutely. I'm so glad to have everybody here. I was so disappointed when, when I heard from the doctor I wasn't going to be able to compete tonight, but like I said, hey, I am here. Oh. There's Niles now. He, he calls that, I believe, his grape stomp. Yeah, he's stomping the grapes there. I, I, don't, I, I didn't see any grapes on the back of Frank Stone, but, but that's what he does. He stomps the grapes. Good shots to the midsection. This is exactly what he needs to do. He cannot die. Whip out of the corner. Reverse now. Plunkett follows him in. Sort of a toss out to the middle of the ring there where he can get him in for a pin. This time of only two. Referee trying to stay on top of the action, getting in the right position is Ben Scheinberg, our referee. Now the matches I have watched of Niles, this is when he's best, when he's in control. He dictates how fast, how slow the match goes. The crowd truly behind Frank Stone here. Getting caught in a hold from Niles Plunkett could be devastating. Whips him into the corner, now Stone comes back out, shoulder tackle. Nice shoulder tackle. He's fired up, Bob. He is. Close line, another close line. Irish whip now off the ropes. Huge back body drop. Bob, he almost hit our lights there. Yeah, I gotta be careful there. We're oh. Nice Samoan drop. Let's see if he can capitalize. One, two. Not quite oh, enough. Oh, that was close. Frank's still fighting, though. He still has that fight. To... Looks like he's looking for something here. Went for that big boot. Plunkett ducking it. What's he going to do here? Looked like he was going to try to twist him around for a neck breaker. Look at that. 
Stone pins him. One, two, three. three. Wow, what a huge win for Frank Stone. He just pinned a former TV champion. One, two, three in the middle ring. It's so good to see my buddy. All his hard work is paying off in and outside of the ring. Good for him, man. Well, there you have it. A big win tonight for Frank Stone. We're in Irving, Texas. We're live. Bam Bam Malone has been my guest commentator for this great match. And thank you so much for joining me out here, sir. Thanks for having me, Bob. Anytime. Kevin Sullivan and James Beard, two men who know the history and the prestige of the NWA. And here, that national championship being defended in the ring right here in the middle of the ring in Carthage, Texas on SWE Fury. James Beard. How did you manage this one? Well, you know, uh, I've got a long history with NWA. As a matter of fact, if you've worked in this business for any length of time, and, and Kevin can say the same thing, uh, at, at any high level, you've been a part of the NWA. Wow. And, and uh, uh, you know, I actually uh, helped run the NWA for several years and, and before Billy Corgan uh, purchased it. And, and uh, we have a good relationship, and, and uh, we're very proud to at least be a friendly uh, competitor, if you want to put it that way. And, yes, sir. Uh, and uh, we're, we're proud to have Trevor here with us. Tre and Bob, I just want to put my two cents in. James has, has done an incredible job of mending fences and building bridges. And we have an open challenge. Anybody can defend their belt here, right, James? Absolutely, yeah. This is a, this is a place where it's all about competition, and we don't really care what the letters are in front of it. You know, the, the, we care about our letters, definitely, the SWE Fury, but, but uh, you know, if, if somebody wants to come in here and put their belt up, you know, I'm more than happy to put them in the ring. And Trevor Murdoch is in that ring right now and just takes a blasted chop. Yeah, now, let me tell you something. A lot of these fans may not know Jeremy Wyatt, but I guarantee you Trevor Mur Murdoch knows him. He is a talented guy. Getting in his face. You, you know what I'd like to see, uh, James, if you can get it done? Trevor Murdoch versus Charlie Haas. Oh belt goodness. versus belt. Oh. That would be a bond burner. That would it? be something to, yeah, that may take some negotiations, but I'll tell you what, it, it would be worth the effort. Who's it really got would it. be. Yes. Trevor can get a little crazy too sometimes. Yeah, and Trevor, you know, there's no wasted motion with Trevor. No, it's not. It, you know, he, he's not just Trevor Murdoch. He's absolutely almost like an identical, a, a identical uh, version of our old buddy Dick Murdoch. Right. Uh, and, and, you know, you knew what that was like. Yes, I did. I spent many sleepless nights with Dick. But uh, the thing about him, he, he reminds me so much of Dickie because, like I said, he has a workmanlike ethic. Yes. He packs his lunch. He's in there, whether it's 10 minutes or an hour. Trevor's going to give you a thousand percent. Absolutely, he doesn't care whether it's pretty or not. He just gonna, he just knows what he's doing. He's a tough old guy. Tell me a little bit about that national championship, James. Well, you know, it's it's a, a, one of three major championships in the NWA. They've got the world, uh, obviously, the, the, the legacy of the world championship, which we all respect. And uh, and then they have, a, a, I think, a, a, it used, used to be the North American championship and the national. I don't think that they actually recognize the North American at this moment in time, but uh, it's just the national in the world. And, and, and Trevor, Trevor is the national champion. And, and of course, Nick Aldis is the world champion. You know, it would be great for us to be a neutral area and have Trevor against Nick Aldis. Oh, that would be, yes. I'm a big fan of both of them, that you know? Be, yeah, and, yeah. And, Nick, uh, Nick is a great representative of our business and, and, and of, of, of a, a belt that means so much to all of us, really. Right, and, uh, uh, you know, Tim Storm maybe could get another shot at Nick Aldis. I mean, didn't Nick beat Tim for the belt? Uh, he did, and, and uh, I, you know, I, I would... You know, as, as someone who knows Tim very well, I, I, he would love to have that more, one more, one more run with that thing. I'm sure. Yeah, and, and, and we're, we're, you know, sitting there talking about the NWA championship, and, and we do it out of respect because it is the oldest championship that, that I know of, and and, uh, uh, and and I do respect that. I respect the NWA. He's an absolutely great champion. And, and, and I tell you what, they couldn't find a better better guy to represent that national title than that guy in the ring right now. And he's certainly doing a real workmanlike uh, 
beat down. I mean, like we said before, to nausea, this guy just packs the lunch and goes and gets the job done. Just methodical, yes. Just a big, strong guy. It's Trevor Murdoch, who's going up to the second rope now. What's it? Oh! Oh! Oh, that hurt. Oh! <laughs> I think I punched my clock just in and head on home. That, yeah. Oh. yeah. If, that, if that had been Dickie, that would have shook up a lot of Coors Lights. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> Murdoch in a precarious position now up there on that top turnbuckle. What's it going to be here from Jeremy Wyatt? Yeah, Jeremy, Jeremy is definitely a... Uh, he's a gamer. Yeah, he, he's, a, he's definitely a guy that's dangerous in that ring. Uh, a lot of these fans don't know that much about him, but I can promise you he is talented. Yeah. Oh, 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 that that's might it. Do it. One, two, three. You don't go. get up from that, man. No. <laughs> Texas guy using a Texas finish right there. That, 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 that old bulldog will work every time, won't it? Yeah, it's a uh, real Texas wrestling, that's for sure. Yeah, boy. Yeah. Good to see Trevor. Great to see Trevor Murdoch here in the ring defending that national championship. Here representing the NWA on SWE Fury. And coming up in just a little bit, a big honor for a big man, Terry Bam Bam Gordy, Miranda Gordy here to to receive an honor, in honor of her dad. That's coming up next here on SWE Fury. We'll be right back. We're back here on SWE Fury, and we will see the television title be defended tonight. Rodney Mack making his way to the ring now. Once a member of the Rabid Empire when he had his tag team with Jacus. Uh, and here to talk to us and help us call this match is none other than Nigel Rabbit, the leader of the Rabbit Empire. Hello, Nigel. Robert, it's always dismal to see you, Mr. Sullivan, so lovely to be in your presence again. Thank you, sir. Wow. Okay. Uh, so what do you think? Uh, give me your take on Rodney Mack's career of late. 
Rodney Mack's career is, of late has been uh, rather remarkable, and it's been exactly what I would have predicted for Rodney Mack. Uh, and uh, I mean, oh. I'm not going to take anything away Whoa. from Jeremy Wyatt, but look at that shot, that forearm shot that he just took, staggering him from one corner to the oh, wow. other. And that vicious whip. Rodney Mack is, he, to say he's a beast is a discredit to him. And I thought Jeremy was going to put up a much tougher fight than this. Now, I'm not going to count Mr. Wyatt out. He is a tremendous, tremendous athlete, a gifted grappler. Ooh. But there is something about Rodney. I mean... I, I agree with you, Nigel. I think he's intimidated by Rodney. I mean, and who wouldn't be? Who I wouldn't mean, be? I, I was intimidated by him. And I managed him. Rodney Mack has been training more fiercely. Harder than ever, and uh, especially since gaining that television championship. And here tonight, oh. big forearm puts Wyatt straight on his back, but now he has a hold of Rodney's foot. When you let Rodney get a hold of him, that's not wise. Yeah. Oh, oh wow. wow. I understand why he's holding on to his foot. You don't want to be kicked by it. Ooh. Oh, my goodness. Wyatt seemingly outmatched here up against uh, Rodney Mack, fresh out of the dog pound, and our television champion here on SWE Fury. Oh. Only two. Well, that's just kind of a precursor, isn't it? What? You know, uh, at one point, oh. we, wow. Now they're out there on that platform, that walkway. Oh, this is not a good place to be, Mr. Wyatt. No, especially with all that equipment and lighting equipment that's out there to... Uh, oh, oh, wow. Well, that's one way to get back in the ring. A little help uh -oh, there. Uh-oh, he's got oh. the... That's... Uh -oh. His self-contained... Oh, he blocked it. Rodney was he going for that... Leg. That euthanizer that he's used so effectively to put away so many opponents. He was trying to get it locked in on Jeremy Wyatt, who uh, knew it was coming and fought it. Jeremy Wyatt, very intelligent about the business, very intelligent about what he does. I, I can guarantee you he scouted Rodney Mack. So he knew what to look for. He knew what to expect. Jeremy Wyatt, of course, his debut at SWE Fury was to uh, challenge for uh, NWA National Championship. That's right, he uh, did that up against. Oh, you're not going to get out of it oh. this time. Oh, no. no. Well, this is not a good place to be. Euthanizer locked in, and he's tapping. Before too long, Charlie Haas will be out here to defend the heavyweight championship. But right now, we're having a look at our television champion, Rodney Mack, victorious here tonight in Irving, Texas on SWA Fury. Nigel, thanks for joining us. Yes, yes, yes. It's a great honor for you, Mr. Sullivan. It's been a pleasure. For the gold, it's a heartthrob with the tag team. Haven't seen those guys working together much here lately. Bam Bam was decommissioned for a little while, unable to wrestle under doctor's orders. But he's back now and here tonight to face Andrew Anderson. Been looking forward to seeing that young man get back in the ring, get back to work here in SWE Fury. I have two, Bob. The, the young man has made a name for himself. He's up and climber and I hope to see him what do you think Bob would you like to see him in the tournament for the Texas belt that would be an awesome thing to see Bam Bam Malone definitely a crowd favorite here Dallas Texas Eddie Deans is where we are tonight but June 19th we'll be down the road a piece in Irving Texas at the beautiful Irving Convention Center where we will have SWE Fury Fest and one big name sign for that we mentioned previously here tonight is Kevin Nash? Kevin Nash is the head to me of the NWO. Kevin Nash is a phenomenal athlete, and I can't wait to see him. Andrew Anderson now. I got that side headlock locked in on 
Bam Bam Malone, who is trying to muscle his way out of it there. Whip off the rope, comes back into a shoulder tackle there. As uh, That's kind of like running into a Mack truck when Andrew Anderson comes at you like that. It certainly is. Andrew Anderson spends a lot of time in the gym working that upper body, so those arms, those shoulders, massive shoulders. So a shoulder tackle from that guy is, is nothing to laugh at. And uh, trying to work the shoulder was Bam Bam Malone there. Found out that was probably a fruitless effort. He gets a chop there on the ropes, whip off the rope, ducks a clothesline now. Ducks a elbow of his own, a big flying drop kick there for Andrew Anderson as the crowd is on their feet for Bam Bam. Out of the way goes Anderson. He's got him up. Whoa! Good grief suplex there. Right back for a count of, it looks like, only one. Andrew Anderson is very deceiving for his size, how quick he is. The man can move, and he's tough, he's big. All of the above as he is... Uh, I now got the chin working it on uh, and with the knee in the back of Bam Bam who works his way out with a elbow to the gut there. Forearm shot. Oh wow. Grab the face it looked like. That's a big paw that Andrew has. And he has the basics of wrestling down wow. perfect. Oh he's biting him on the face. Andrew Anderson, a lesson in brutality for young Bam Bam Malone tonight. Irish whip out of the corner now into the opposite corner, comes back out, gets a little foot in the gut there. Double underhook, pin one, two. Bam Bam coming out just in time. Great crowd on hand at Eddie Dean's Ranch here in downtown Dallas. Pretty soon, from what we're hearing, there's gonna be a highway running right through this very area where we're sitting right now. But there won't be June 19th, will it? No, no. It, they, the, hopefully they're gonna be paving a new highway straight to that building, the Irving Convention Center. I hope you've got your tickets. You can do so at swefury.com for Fury Fest coming up June 19th. You do not wanna miss that huge wrestling event as Bam Bam. Oh, straight into the big boot there from Anderson. Hey, there you go. Clothesline, though, taking the big man off his feet. Wow, back elbow there. Anderson stumbles to his feet. Wow, wow. Look at the strength of Bam Bam Malone with a body slam. Andrew seems to be running out of gas. Oh. Hey, wait a minute. Nigel Rabbit, Nigel grabbing the, now up in a fireman's carry, Rabbit distracted there, Bam Bam off again. Uh-oh, wait a minute. Nigel grabbed Anderson. What was he grabbing Anderson for? Oh, wait a minute. I think he thought he was getting Malone, but he didn't. And Malone, ladies and gentlemen, your winner of the match, Bam! Of a little full paw on the uh, part of Nigel Rabbit there to get the win against Andrew Anderson. And Anderson is incensed. Don't worry, the man is rubbish. Something has to be done. I've got plans, I've got machinations, yeah, everything is going to according care. to plan. Andrew! <laughs> Great work tonight, Andrew. Really. You should be very proud of yourself. <laughs> oh. Oh. <laughs> Standing in the corner to my right, the challenger. From Hilton Head Island, she is the American muscle mechanic, Amber. No!
And standing in the corner to my left, she is the reigning and defending SWE Fury Women's Champion from Rio de Janeiro, Brazil, the Brazilian Wonder Woman, Christy James! <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, your official in charge of this contest is the lovely Yali Sefa. Christy James is definitely somebody who I guess follows the rules, likes a good actual wrestling match, and Amber Nova is the same, so I could see a healthy competition here. But at the end of the day, you really have to do what it takes to keep or get that gold. And that's exactly what we're going to see. Uh, while I know these ladies sharing a little bit of mutual respect here, we're going to see a match here tonight. We are indeed, and I'm really happy that Yali Sapphire is calling this match because she is a great referee. She calls it down the middle and makes sure that no funny business happens on the part of these two ladies. Whoa, look at Amber Nova going under now, and on top, there she is. She's got herself in a position there where she could uh, do some damage to Christy Janes. Brittany Nicole, as you know, folks, uh, comes out here every week and talks about these ladies' matches with us and talks about the women's division here. Uh, last week we saw for the first time in an actual match, Rosemary. <laughs> yes, Rosemary is uh, frightening, as Ma it were. Yeah. Uh, I, I definitely, I mean, I wasn't even out here for that match. I'm, I'm that terrified of her. I let, I let Christy try her hand. At, at this because, you know, I I really just can't, um, can't stand blood. Well, uh, fortunately, not too much of that in that last, that match last week, a little bit, uh, but, but uh, what a, what a, an in-ring debut for Rosemary, who we have seen uh, in weeks past, uh, kind of come out and insert herself in those matches Ooh. of Malaya Hosaka. Yes, she has. I mean, I don't know what she has against Malaya, but Malaya did something to make her an enemy. Well, Kevin Sullivan, you were saying that goes way back. There's some bad blood there somewhere, right? Exactly. You don't get that intense unless something personal has happened. And I have known Malaya for a long time. So whatever Rosemary did, it was pretty bad. right into that turnbuckle. Very competitive match here between Christy James and Amber Nova going into the corner oh. now, the first. Christy James going oh, up. Beautiful nice bridge. bridge. Only two there. Amber Nova getting a little flustered as this one goes on. She really has to stay focused. She's got to work on a body part of some sort of Christie's to wear her down, and she's going to stretch her out now a little bit. Looks like it. Sort of seated with an abdominal stretch type maneuver on Christy James but there. But this crowd is right behind Christy. We go from respectful applause to ferocious screaming and, and chanting and yes. every other emotion you can imagine here. Oh, oh! In Canton, Texas, where SWE Fury is at the Canton Civic Center, an enormous venue that's full of people shopping on first Monday weekends in Canton, Texas, but right now is full of, full of wrestling fans watching the women's title on the line and a count of only two there as Christy Janes tries to put away Amber Nova. She tried and I don't know if Amber Nova kicked out because she just pure instinct or if she actually wanted to continue with this match. A lot of times you gotta think that's instinct. A kick there, Amber off the ropes, finds herself in a fireman's carry. Oh, shoulder breaker. Rolls her over. One, two, three. Oh! Christy James. And ladies and gentlemen, your winner of the match is still SWE Women's Champion, Christy James. Christy James. She may have retained the title, but you 
cannot take anything away from Amber Nova there. Kevin Sullivan, we are going to see the World Championship uh, title defended here. That is the uh, belt that's around the waist of Charlie Haas. And uh, we have a very special guest who will be joining us here on commentary. Welcome to the commentary booth, Wes Briscoe. Man, I thought you were never going to introduce me. <laughs> I thought I was just sitting out here just joining and watching the matches, man. Well, man, we were we were uh, enthralled by that last segment there where we found out now we have a new women's TV title coming. I know. That's so excited. And the girls deserve that. The women out there have been busting their ass. And I love everything that SWE has been doing. I mean, the talent, the roster, from big cast to just everybody here has really been putting it on. And what a great show. What a great great crowd. What a great it just atmosphere all together. I'm excited. I'm so happy to be here. Oh, and speaking of happy to be here, Charlie Haas does not look happy to be here. And speaking of disrespect, and speaking of someone that's a little bit cocky and arrogant is your world champion. A, a little bit, yeah, I, and I would say it went to his head, but he was that way before he won the dang thing. No, actually, me and Charlie were really good friends at one period of time, and I believe that title has really gone to his head, has really changed some things in Charlie's mindset, and really made Charlie a person that we're not used to seeing, and it's gonna take someone to shut his mouth. And could that someone be you, young man? Here's the thing. I've known you since you've been a kid. I see you as a very serious challenger to Charlie right now. Well, this would be a match I'd pay to see. Well, Charlie, right now, he, he holds the title. He holds all the cards. I mean, if he were to ever accept the match, which I don't think he would because look how arrogant he is. Look at his mannerisms in the ring. You think he would really want an opponent that could actually hang with him, that could actually go amateur wrestling, can actually go hardcore, can actually go high flying, can actually go old school wrestling, can hit any style, Kevin. You think that Charlie could keep up with a West Bristol? No, I don't. I think it would be hard push for Charlie to keep up with you. I'd pay to see the match, and I'm sure people from SWE Fury would definitely come to see this match. Well, Charlie Haas is no joke. Charlie Haas is one of the legit athletes. And I respect him, and I had a lot of respect for him until he started disrespecting everyone here at SWE. And that's where I stand up to bullies. I stand up to people that disrespect the people that need someone that needs a hero stick up for him and that's not going to take the bullshit that Charlie Haas does. It, and Charlie is a bully. He There's is no a bully. Question. Look at him. No Look question. at him. Well, the sign, the sign does say Charlie's there, this sign. So, happy to oblige is Charlie Haas. I don't wow. think Charlie even read the sign. Yeah, but here's the thing is that, that kid really worked hard building that sign. That kid really took every effort to build that sign, and he wants to destroy something. That this kid worked everything. I mean, at the time and era that we we're in, and at the way our country is, all we want is love and respect. And Charlie cannot give us love and respect. He wants to hate on everybody. Listen to the crowd, Kevin. Listen to how the people are reacting to Charlie. Yeah. And I think it comes through that the other thing, though, Wes, I'm not going to take anything away from him, and you, you didn't either. He's one of the greatest amateur wrestlers in the history of our country, taking nothing away from you, and that's why I think right now on the roster, you'd be one of the guys that could hang with them. Well, not only that, he, his amateur wrestling is, I mean, maybe better than mine. But he also has more ring experience than I do. I'm not saying that's going to help me back, but Charlie has been to the game. Charlie has been to the top, and I've been to the top. I've wrestled the Olympic gold medalist, too, and I beat him. So I have been there, but Charlie has the skill 
has the mindset, but we don't know where Charlie's mind is right now. We don't know where the mindset of this world champion is and, right now. And that's the key point, Bob. We do not know where his mindset is. That's, we do not know. Well, I, I'm, no argument from me, absolutely. Uh, I mean, Charlie Haas is a loose cannon, a wild man as he's been back here in SWE Fury. And you know, it, it's uh, the heartthrob Jaden in there right now, trying his, uh, trying his hand to get in that, that title, but Oh, as we've seen, Charlie Haas. It's just oh. the experience. Charlie has the experience. Charlie has been through every scenario that you can ever picture. But the key thing is, can we keep Charlie's mind set to the goal? Because when he gets someone in the ring like Wes Briscoe, his mindset has to change. He cannot be focused because I'm experienced, I'm ready, and I'm looking for a fight. And a lot of guys don't look for a fight when they're coming to Charlie. But here's the thing. He does pick up one body part. Oh, no. Oh, and he right. works on it. Look what he's doing now. He's standing on the ankle and putting pressure on the oh, knee. Oh, goodness. Putting pressure on the knee. He's taking his leg out from under him. Well, it's like Charlie is the best at dissecting a body part. As taking one body part and learning how to move the joints and to actually hurt your opponent where you're not going to be able to get back up because he's a, like you said, he's an amateur wrestler. He's skilled at attacking that body part, which he's working that knee excellently. Yes. And, and what he's going to do is, I'm but willing to bet he stays with the knee. He won't go any other place but the leg and knee and possibly hip. But that showboating, see, yeah. with that showboating, he's given the, his competition a little opportunity, but the, oppor the competition didn't take that opportunity. I wouldn't take that opportunity. Look at Charlie, just the, the maintaining the control that he has. Yeah. There he goes, back to the knee, just like you said. Oh, right wow. back to the knee. Slowly dismantling Jaden here is Charlie Haas, our SWE Fury. He's dissecting the knee in every perfect way possible. And that's why Charlie is one of the most fierce competitors out there, is because he knows how to work that body part and make sure he puts pressure on every single part of that body part. It's very hard to fight when you're laying down on your back and your leg doesn't work. If you remember Kevin Sullivan, you know, when Charlie Haas first made his very first appearance here in SWE Fury, he was mainly given preliminary matches. And I believe that's kind of what started that transformation. He was not happy about that. And remember, he came over to our table and made it known that he wanted some championship gold. I mean, he got in our faces about it. He did, absolutely. He was absolutely furious. And I think he's had a chip on his shoulder ever since that. Look at that. Well, see, here's something about Wes Briscoe. He wants to earn his opportunities. I don't want any opportunity given to me. I want to go out there and earn it with blood, sweat, and tears. Whoa, here we go. There goes the heart throw. He almost got him on spare. Let's see what happens. You got to get up. You got to get up or at least crawl to your opponent. You got to try. You got to try. I'll give you a lot of credit, Wes Briscoe. You did come in here and you, you did do exactly what you're saying. You're working to earn your way up. You uh, faced up against Mil Muertes. How was that match for you? Uh, I didn't know the rules. And that what hurt me the worst, is not knowing the rules. And I really should have paid attention to the rules. I didn't know about the closed fist. But we got the heart off right now going really towards Charlie. But I don't know. I see Charlie doing something sketchy. I just. Yeah. I see him playing possum up. Oh, there we go. Bad move. Oh. You know, I got to give you credit for taking responsibility for your actions about not knowing the rules. It's very strange here, and I think the reason why. There's that submission maneuver again. He's got it locked in, Kevin Sullivan. He's working it, and, and that slowly dismantling that knee, and now he's using that submission. Oh, and that taps he out. out. He needs to let go. Yeah. He, he's, he's a master at it. Oh. He's the master. I actually tried to ask him what he calls that submission maneuver, and he slammed the door in my face last week.
But you know something, for every submission, there's a counter. That's right. That's right. That's right. I'll tell you, Wes Briscoe, we look forward to seeing what you do here in SWE Fury. And uh, we look forward to seeing what's next oh, for this man of women. Look at this, 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 you guys need a champion that's a people's champion. You guys need a champion that's someone that's not going to stick up or stand for this doing? bulliness. What is he doing now? Uh, He's taking liberties on someone that he doesn't need to be taking. The, the match is over. Someone get he them out of the ring. Won. He clearly won. And what is he doing? Looks like he's using the rope Kevin, there. Kevin, do I need to get involved? Do I need to stop uh, this? Uh, this is not uh, cool. You, you just got to, here, let, let's, let's let things play out. No, like, this is disrespect. He does not need to be doing it. He's already won the match, fair and square, and yet he's still doing more damage to the, his opponent's knee. It that looks, is not cool. No, you're right, but it looks like he's leaving. Looks like he's leaving. Look at the language dis disrespect of being rude. He needs a challenger to so someone that puts him in his place. He has a mic now, I think. Yep, there he is. He's got the microphone now. Let's, let's listen to what he has to say. Look at the crowd already throwing stuff at him. Look at that. He's a lunatic. Ever since he got that gold. <laughs> to say the least to see what Charlie Haas is doing here in SWE Fury. Yeah, I'm so happy to be here at SWE, but I'm not going to allow that bullying, that disrespect from Charlie Haas. You know what? There's going to be someone that's going to stand up to him, and I believe it's I'm that be man. Good Kevin, thank you for having me, guys. I enjoyed it. SWE for life. Love you guys. Let's rock out.